Today's car industry is dominated by SUVs. They come in all shapes and sizes. They're not even priced all that high anymore, which makes them somewhat affordable. It becomes difficult for car manufacturers to justify continuing making small cars because nobody buys them. The situation is somewhat better in the affordable compact segment. Most of the cars can be bought for under $20,000, making this segment rather essential. Also, the automakers have to make them more appealing with more comfort and standard features, which actually gives you some very good competition on the market today. And that brings me to today's star of the show, the 2020 VW Jetta, which is one of the best new cars I've driven in the recent past. I'm not overstating it, and here's the reason for that. The current generation Jetta came out in 2018 as a 2019 model, and that is important because it rides on the same modular MQB platform the Volkswagen Golf does. This is also the same platform all of the current SUVs from Volkswagen ride on as well. What does it mean for us consumers? It means that Jetta became cheaper because it's cheaper to manufacture. And that doesn't mean that it became worse than it used to be. Opposite to that, it actually became better. But let's take it step by step. Exterior is clean and settled. The front grille doesn't look as disproportionate as the one in the new Passat. There is line fluidity and balance. The whole car has a good road presence even compared to the Golf. The exterior simplicity continues inside too. The new Jetta took most of the good things from the Golf, like turn signal switches, steering wheel, and most of the center console layout. I wish the carpeted door pockets transitioned too, but that's not a big deal. Unlike the stupid flat benches in the new Passat, the seats in the Jetta are actually comfortable with good bolstering and support. The SE trim has them wrapped in some leatherette type of material which looks sterile and flat compared to real leather, but at the same time making them easy to clean and they're also perforated which cools them down much better on a sunny day. The rear seats are decent, there's legroom, I'm a tall guy at 6 foot 2 and I can fit behind myself without any issues. The seats also fold down in a 60-40 split giving you the option to transport larger items or just go camping. The trunk itself is wide and deep, which would make for a really nice sport wagon if VW would still offer them. Although analog, the gauge cluster looks like a sharp, high-resolution image. It's not distracting your attention, instead it's displaying the important data you really need and, and despite having only a small black and white screen in the middle, it gives you a good amount of information and settings to configure. Following the same philosophy, the infotainment system is easy to navigate and configure. And although you could argue that it doesn't have all that many apps or settings to play with, I would ask you, how much do you really interact with your infotainment system aside from radio and climate control? What matters is that you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which became sort of a standard today in modern cars, and that's pretty much what you will be using anyway. Engine and transmission. The previous generation had many engine options, 1.4, 1.8 liter, the 2 liter in the GLI, and even the 2.5 liter 5 cylinder, which is a very reliable engine by the way. Now you only get the 1.4 liter engine for all of the models except for the GLI which still comes with a 2 liter engine, same as the Golf GTI. And here's the thing, the 1.4 is actually really good. I never felt like I wanted more. It comes with 184 uh, pound foot of torque which is more than enough. Compared to the same displacement engine I had in the Golf Sport Wagon, this one feels a lot more confident. The peak torque comes at 1400 RPMs which is really really low. And that's what you will feel when you drive in the city. The car will feel a lot more powerful than it actually is. The Jetta feels more powerful than the new Passat with its 2 liter engine, but with the same amount of power. Transmission is actually a highlight too, because compared to others who switched to CVT, uh, VW still offers an automatic transmission, which is an 8 speed. And I would even say that it feels smooth and quicker when you put it in the uh, sport mode. Suspension and handling. As I mentioned in the beginning, the new Jetta rides on the same platform the Mark 7 Golf does, which means that the car is smooth but not boaty. It handles well without being harsh. And that's very impressive because now you have a torsion beam as a rear suspension instead of the multi-link you had in the previous generation. In the past four days, I've covered around 500 miles of highway roads, back roads, city streets with potholes and, and so on. And I never really felt much understeer or the suspension being offset when you go over a pothole on a high speed. The car was smooth and planted all the time. And that brings me to the final conclusion, which is this. At $23,000, the Jetta SE gives you a ton of value. As I mentioned earlier, this is the best new car I've driven 
in the recent past and it's also the best VW I drove as well. Well, I only drove two other Volkswagens to be fair. That was the Gold Sport Wagon and the VW Passat. The Jetta lacks some of the driving refinement you find in the Golf, but it wins with a better base engine compared to the Golf. And it completely dominates the new Passat, which is, to my disappointment, the worst new car I've been in. As far as competition goes, you'll have to pay around $25,000 for a Corolla or a Civic with the same features the SE has as standard, like heated and power adjustable front seats, sunroof and leather wrap interior. That's why it's so good, it's just balanced in everything it does, it doesn't try to fool you because it knows what you need, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, also subscribe, comment and like the video to appreciate the effort that goes into making them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.